We're about to work on a 2007 Toyota Avalon. We'll be replacing the alternator. We're just gonna start by moving the engine cover. Should be just held on by little grommets. Pops right off. And then we'll go by taking this plastic cover off. These little clips, you just push in. You hear them snap. And that should uh, release them. Pop them out if you want. So that gives us room to our alternator. Now, of course, we want to disconnect the uh, negative battery cable uh, before we proceed. We can get these front electrical connectors uh, disconnected. 10 millimeter here. Just a plug. Now this harness can be disconnected from the retaining bracket, um, but we have to swap this bracket over anyway, so we might as well just undo the bracket and leave the harness connected into that. So that takes care of our electrical for now. So camera angle's not the best, but if you can see right there, it's a 14 millimeter bolt. That's for our tensioner pulley for removing the belt. So what we're gonna do is just, you can get these tools from the auto parts store if you don't own one yourself. It's a 14 millimeter end, so if you have a long uh, ratchet as well with a socket on it, um, that should work too, but we wanna turn it counterclockwise that'll release tension and then we can get the belt off of the alternator. Now that we have the serpentine belt off of the alternator pulley, we can go ahead and uh, start unbolting it. There's a 14 millimeter bolt up here and then down below, you can feel it with your hand, there's another 14 millimeter bolt um, pretty much just directly across from it. To get the top bolt is a three inch extension with a shallow and that allows you enough room uh, past this radiator hose. To get the bottom one, it's a deep socket with a swivel head ratchet. And then I like to use a long one for leverage to get it down in there. I like to just crack them loose first. Kind of tight getting in there, but Bottom one's gonna be the hardest, so you can get that one first. All right, that one comes out. Before we do the top one, I'll show you another bolt we'll get first. So this one's a little hard to see, but right in between the alternator and the heat shield, let me go in for you. I painted it gold so you could see it, but there's that 12 millimeter bolt right down in there. You gotta take that off. That's attached to the alternator. It's really easy to get to with just a little a socket and extension. All right, there it is. A deep socket, three inch extension. Now I'll take this top one out. All right, now typically there's not enough room in between the radiator and the engine for that to come out. So this is where our paths uh, can cross. There's two methods of getting enough room in here. The first method involves draining the coolant and then we take this uh, fan shroud out. So the upper radiator hose comes off, that's why you drain the coolant. And then the fan shroud comes up and out and that'll give you enough room uh, to clear the alternator. If draining the coolant is not an option, what you can do is take this radiator core support off and then the radiator will be able to move back enough uh, to get out of the way. The benefit of draining the radiator is that now you get new coolant. So if this is a 2007 on this vehicle, let's say the coolant hasn't been done or it's been many years since the last time the coolant had been changed, well, now's your opportunity. 
But sometimes you can't drain the coolant. Let's say you're in a parking lot. You broke down on the side of the road and draining the coolant isn't an option. So let me show you real quick how to remove this uh, just so you can see the process. It's really not that difficult. So 10 millimeters. You need a wrench or a ratcheting wrench for this fifth one unless you take this latch off. But you don't have to take it off if you have ratcheting wrench. Oh, there's another tin hidden underneath. All right, once you have all that off, you just pull it up and now the radiator can be pushed back. And that's all the room you need to get this alternator up and out. Now the factory method, and the way we're gonna do it on this vehicle, is by draining the coolant. So right down there is the coolant drain plug. We'll go ahead and unscrew that, have a catch pan underneath, uh, and just let the coolant drain. Opening up the radiator cap will help speed up the process of it draining. So while we're letting it drain, so again, this comes off, 10 millimeter. All right, so there's hoses over here that come off. And you can pull it from its holder, or you could just pull the whole uh, holder out. You pinch from underneath, it'll pull out. And then same on this side, you can pinch from underneath. Disconnect it real quick. You don't break anything. And underneath, you can see, get a pair of pliers. Just pinch it together, and it'll fall out of its hole. All right, and then we'll take this off. Just another 10 millimeter. Should wiggle right out. Now remember when it goes back in, it goes back in in two places, right here and right here. For the cooling fan wiring, you wanna just disconnect all these uh, harness clips. One, two, three. Um, I don't think that has to come off and then disconnect it from here, and then if we already disconnected uh, that one. And then this wiring can just get brought out of the way. Upper radiator hose also comes off. Sometimes these hoses can stick on. Uh, if you need, you can use a pick like this, just a heavy pick. Get in between there, and then move it around, and it'll come off or, or just twist it. So that's off and just pushed out of the way. Now the fan shroud itself is held on with these little clips. So you push them in and pull the fan shroud out. And there's another clip there. And then there's one more on that side. So that's the process. Uh, let me find it. Pinch, pull, separate, and then we'll lift it out. Now with the fan shroud removed, we're back to where we were, creating room to get the alternator out. Now a little pry bar or screwdriver, just get in here, and it should just move out of the way, it should wiggle out. Okay, there we go. Once you have the alternator out a little, it'll expose right there, if you can see it, that little clip, that little harness clip, you wanna go ahead and get a screwdriver in there, unclip that, and then we're 100% free to pull it the rest of the way out. You may need a pick uh, to get that off, but once it's off, I'm ready to go. And the old one's out. So now we wanna just line up the new alternator with the old alternator, just make sure the connectors uh, are the same. Everything looks good, looks the same, and we're ready to slap it in. So what we'll want to do on this old one is just pull out this bracket, 12 millimeter, and then put it on the, uh, the new one. Our first torque spec of the day, that is 15 foot-pounds. Just another quick tip. Sometimes if you buy a remanufactured alternator, they don't push this nut back. It, it actually moves inside this to pinch it onto its little uh, pivot point. So what you can do is just put the nut back on, bolt it in a few threads, and then tap on this end, and it'll push it back. You want it flush or just a little recessed into this little arm here, 
for it to go go in. Otherwise, you'll be fighting that and getting frustrated. So you can see where mine is. I have it just recessed past. Um, that'll go on nice and easy. And then when you tighten it up, this will get sucked through uh, and pinch it anyway. You want to put this bracket side in first and then turn it that way. Uh, if you go in uh, pulley side first and then try to turn it, this ends up hitting the exhaust or the uh, oil dipstick. So put this in, then that way. And you could put that uh, harness clip back in. I'm going to put the bottom bolt in first. Once it has a few threads, then I'll put the top one in. And then I'll just thread in that little... Once everything has a few threads started, now we can start tightening things down. These two 14 millimeter bolts are 32 foot-pounds. This little bracket bolt is 15 foot-pounds. And now we can put our electrical connectors on. This 10 millimeter connector is uh, 89 inch pounds so it really doesn't have to be that tight um, and then don't forget our harness a little bracket here goes on that's that little 10 millimeter uh, and then that's on then we could put our uh, fan shroud back in get that all connected up put a radiator hose back on start filling it up with coolant We can help these radiator hoses come off better in the future. Just a little silicone paste. Doesn't take a lot, just a little. Close your coolant drain if you haven't already. We'll fill it up with coolant. If your serpentine belt fell off too many pulleys or you're replacing it completely like this vehicle is, you have to jack the vehicle up, take the tire off, and remove this little shield. It's just 10 millimeter bolts holding it on. It comes off and now it exposes more pulleys. If you take the air filter out, that can help you get this piece back in. Uh, you can see it right here. So then you can use your fingers and maneuver it around. It's just a matter of kind of twisting and getting it all fit in but it'll feel right. Once it all sits in, it'll just fit right into place and feel good. We'll bolt this down and then put our uh, big brother back on. All right, make sure everything is plugged back in. Uh, you're all tight, good to go. Put the negative battery cable back on and we are ready to start it up. All right, we got it running. Don't mind the flashing. That's just my camera's refresh rate uh, makes it do that. So we can go through the bleeding procedure real quick. We top it off with coolant and then we'll want to come in here and raise the RPM to about 25 to 3 grand. Hold it for 20 seconds, 30 seconds, and then we'll drop it back down to idle for about the same amount of time. Let it idle, do its thing for about 20, 30 seconds, raise it back up. 20, 30 seconds, drop it 20, 30 seconds. And you just do that for a series of, you know, 10 times. Should be enough to get any air out of the system. Once you've gone through that procedure, we'll go ahead and shut it off, let it cool down, and then top it off as needed. Now that we've had the battery disconnected for a period of time, on some of these vehicles, the auto feature will no longer work for the windows. So what we have to do is go through initialization process. Fairly easy. Key in the on run position and then we just hold and it doesn't matter if it's already up or already down but we hold this all the way up keep it held till the window closes and then hold it for an additional one second minimum and that should be it now the auto down should work and the auto up should now work now to do the passenger side you have to initialize it 
from the passenger side uh, switch. So it's the exact same thing. Up, hold it until the window's completely closed, and then continue to hold it for an additional one second minimum. If you have a sunroof, uh, it's pretty much the same thing. You just hold it to its open position until it opens all the way, lifts up, and then you continue to hold it for at least one second. Well, there you go. That's how you can replace an alternator on a Toyota Avalon. Not too challenging. There is that one bolt at the bottom of the alternator that can be a little difficult to uh, access or get to. Not too much space in between there, but um, with that extension and a long ratchet and having that flex head really helps. You can just get it on there, uh, break it loose, and it, it comes out. Other than that, there's two methods of creating room. You could pull off the uh, radiator support if you don't want to drain the coolant. Otherwise, uh, you pull off that upper radiator hose and get to the um, that fan shroud comes out that way and that's another way actually that's the factory way of creating room to get that alternator out uh, other than that once it's out um, that bracket gets uh, swapped over um, and then you just put it in bolt it back together and you're ready to go when you have it all back together uh, just double check that it's charging the way that it should um, right around 14 volts, 13 and a half, 14 uh, volts. You want to test it with um, it under load. So turn the AC on, turn the uh, fan on, the radio on, headlights on, to make sure that it can still charge properly while under load. All right. Well, uh, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. See you on the next one.